Hello everyone, this is a pre-recorded lecture and for today we are going to discuss image characteristics and image quality in computed tomography. Our objectives for today are the following. So at the end of the, at the end of the lecture, we shall be able to describe city image characteristics of image matrix, hands filled unit, and sensitivity profile. And also, we will discuss image quality as it relates to sp spatial resolution, contrast resolution, noise, linearity, and uniformity. First, let us discuss the image matrix. So, image matrix is an image characteristics. So the image obtained in city or in computed tomography is different from that obtained in conventional radiography because it is synthetic in that is and that is artificially created from data received and is not a projected image. So if you scan a patient Ang ma-acquire mo at first is data. Hindi mo siya agad makikita as visible image or projected image. So, whereas in radiography, x-rays form an image directly on the image receptor. But with CT imaging systems, this the x-rays form a stored electronic image that is um, displayed as a matrix of intensities. So, ano nga ulit ang image matrix? So, image matrix is defined as rows and columns of pixels displayed, displayed as digital image, displayed on a digital image. So, the city image format consists of many cells. And each, each assigned a number and displayed as an optical density or brightness level on the monitor. So yun nga, image matrix is defined as rows and columns of pixels displayed on a digital image. So the original ME format, which is 80 by 80 matrix, it has 6,400 individual cells of information. So, paano ito naging 6,400? So, sabi nga, uh, rows and columns. So, here you have 80 by 80. So, ang ibig sabihin yan, ang column ng isang image is 80, 80 squares. Ang rows naman niya is 80 din. So, that is why 80 by 80. Now, if you multiply 80 by 80, or 80 times 80, you will have 6,400. So, yung 6,400, that will be your individual cells of information or the pixels. Meanwhile, on the current imaging systems or in the present city um, systems, we now have or we can now provide um, a matrix of 512 by 512. So, now from 6,400 in the original ME format or the first ME images, we now have 200,062,144 cells of information. So now we can see na nag improve siya in time. And as the number of cells of information or the pixels, um, as nagataas siya, mas naga ganda din yung quality ng ating image. So, itong cells of information, yes, yung sabi ko nga, this is what you call as pixel. So, what is pixel? Pixel is short for picture element. So, pixel is defined as the cell of a digital image matrix. So, kung ang image matrix are rows and columns of pixels, Yung single cell na yun, or the single square, as you can see here, that is now what you call as pixel. So, yun. 
So here, merong formula ang pixel size. So if to get um, the size of a, of a pixel, we will divide the field of view. FOV is field of view divided by the matrix size. And now it will have a unit of mm per pixel or millimeter per pixel. Yeah. So each cell in in a computed tomography image matrix is a two-dimensional representation. And 2D representation ng um, image, that is now your pixel. While the 3D, 3D naman, ito yung voxel. So um, each cell in a computed tomography image matrix is a two-dimensional representation of a volume of tissue or voxel. Okay, yeah, as what I've mentioned, so we have field of view. So ano ba itong field of view? So basically, field of view is the diameter of image reconstruction. Diameter of image reconstruction. So yung image or size na image na makita mo sa um, yung screen, if you acquire a city image, that is what you call as the field of view. Okay, or short for FOV. So, ano ang relevance ng FOV? So, when FOV is increased, the size of each pixel is increased proportionately. So, directly proportional ang size ng FOV sa size ng pixel. Now, when the matrix size in, is increased for a fixed FOV, so kung ang matrix size lang ang i-increase mo, pero same lang ang FOV, ang pixel size naman is liliit. Okay. Yan. Paano, di ba meron tayong formula on how to, um, to know the size of a pixel? So we have here an, an example. So here, let's compute the pixel size of the original ME format. So, yung sabi ko kanina, the original ME format has 80 by 80 matrix. So, given na, uh, for example, given na ang FOV is 20 centimeters, let's just say. So, di ba ang formula is FOV over matrix size. So, the unit is millimeter per pixel. So, we have a value of 20 centimeters for the FOV. So, ang gamit man na unit is um, mm. So, we have to convert first the centimeter to millimeter. So, ilan ba ang millimeter? Ilang millimeters meron sa isang centimeter? So, we have 10. So, now, we will multiply first 20 by 10. So, 20 times 10, it is equivalent to 200 mm. Now, we have the value of the FOV in mm, we can now divide and solve the size of the pixel. So here, 200 mm divided by 80, which is our matrix size. Now we will have the size of our pixel. It is 2.5 mm per pixel. Okay, now we have more uh, uh, sample problem. So what if uh, FOV is 20 centimeters and the matrix is 128 by 128? What will be the matrix? Uh, what will be the pixel size? I mean, so same pa rin, we will convert the centimeter to mm. So 20 times 10, 200. Then divided by 128, that will be 1.7 mm per pixel. So same lang dito, we will have for 512 by 512 matrix, we will have a value of 0 0.4 mm per pixel. And for the FOV of 36 centimeters and image matrix of 512 by 512, we will have a pixel size of 0.7 mm per pixel. Okay. Now let's discuss the voxel size. So voxel is short for volume element. 
So the tissue volume is known as a voxel or volume element. And this is determined by multiplying the pixel size by the thickness of the city slice image. Kung kanina, ang, ano lang, ang size lang ng pixel alone, now we have another dimension. So this is volume is uh, volume element is a 3D element. So now we will consider the slice thickness of a CT image. Okay. So ang unit ng um, pixel size is mm, di ba? So ang um, slice thickness is mm. So ang unit nitong um, voxel size, since it is um, three-dimensional, so cubic millimeter ang kanyang, ang kanyang unit. Okay. Okay. So we have an example again. So if yung kinampute natin kanina na ME image na merong pixel size na ng 2.5 mm, ano naman ngayon ang voxel size? If 5 millimeters ang slice thickness. Now we will compute it. Okay. Ngayon, di ba, ang ating unit for pixel size is mm. But here, we will substitute the given 2.5 and the slice thickness here is 5. So, kailangan natin i-multiply by itself or i-square natin itong 2.5 para maka-achieve tayo ng millimeter squared. Okay. So, ano ba? So, 2.5 um, to the power of 2 is 6.25 millimeters squared. Okay? So, ngayon, meron na tayong uh, millimeter squared na value ng ating pixel size. We will uh, multiply it with the slice thickness, which is 5 mm. So, now we will have the size of our voxel, which is 31.25 millimeters to the power of 3 or cubic millimeters. Okay? Then, so, yung example natin kanina, we will also compute that given na 5 mm ang kanyang slice thickness. Okay. So, for a pixel size of 1.7 millimeter, and a slice thickness of 5 millimeter, you will have a voxel size of 14.5 millimeters to the power of 3 or cubic millimeters. Or for, for 0 0.4 millimeters na pixel size multiplied by 5 mm as its size thickness, given na square mo itong pixel size, you will have 0.8 cubic millimeters. So, ito naman for 0.7 mm na pixel size multiply by itself times 5 mm na slice thickness, you will acquire 2.5 cubic millimeters na voxel size. Okay. So, for the city numbers. So, each um, pixel is displayed on the monitor as a level of brightness, right? So this level, this level of brightness corresponds to a range of CT numbers. This ranges from negative 1,000 to positive 3,000 for each pixel. So it could reach that, that high, okay? Okay, so this is positive 3,000 for the dense bone, ha? Huh? I stand corrected. Okay, I will just change that. Don't bother, okay? So here, these levels um, correspond to the city number. So a city number of negative 1,000 corresponds to air. While a uh, city number of positive 3,000 corresponds to dense bone, this is positive 3,000, and the city number of zero indicates water. 
zero ang water. Okay. So now, you will have to familiarize the city numbers. Again, this, the dense bone is positive 3,000. Okay. So city number ng dense bone is 3,000. And so the degree of X-ray attenuation is determined by the average energy of the X-ray beam and the effective atomic number of the absorber and is expressed by attenuation coefficient. So here you have attenuation coefficient. Okay, ngayon we have a formula on how to compute the city number. So this is a formula. So anyway, familiarize nyo lang. So city number is equivalent to K. Uh, multiplied by um, mu t minus mu w divided by mu w. Okay, ano itong mu t? So the attenuation coefficient, this is attenuation coefficient of the tissue in the pixel under analysis. Uh, mu w is the extra attenuation coefficient of water and k is a constant that determines the scale factor for the range of city images. So the equation shows that the city number for water is always zero because for water, um, mu t is equivalent to mu w. So ang water di ba zero is lang manjud siya. So that mu t minus um, mu w is equivalent to zero. So zero lang ang So it is always zero ang city number ng water. So for the city imaging system to operate with precision, detector response must be calibrated continuously so that water is always represented by zero. So ito ang common nila na um, calibra calibrating um, object or pang calibrating or, or phantom. Ang commonly uh, used na phantom for a city is um, water bath or water. Okay, so kasi ito yung um, pinakadaling i-measure kasi the city number ng water is always zero. So when K is 1,000, the city numbers are called Hansfield units and ranges from negative 1,000 to positive 1,000. So obviously, an enormous amount of information is wasted when the actual dynamic range of images Okay, is so merong problem ang ang iyong system if ang actual mo na images or variation of images is 4096 pero ang naka-display lang sa iyong screen or film are no more than 32 shades of gray. So, however, completion of post processing with window level adjustment allows the entire range to be made visible. Ngayon, let's move on naman sa image reconstruction. So again, when you acquire, when you scan an object or a patient, you will now have this uh, data acquired, okay? So for that, uh, for, that in, for that data to be um, visible in the screen, it has to um, be interpreted. And now, if you acquire that um, data, it may or may have to undergo image reconstruction. So the projections acquired by each detector during CT are stored in computer memory. So the image is reconstructed from these projections by a process called filtered back projection. So the um, process ng, uh, reconstruction is called filtered back projection. Okay. Itong term na filter, ang term na filter, unlike if gamitin mo siya sa x-ray na terms, di ba itong filter is to filter out um, low energy x-ray, di ba? Parang yan yan, to filter out. But ang term na filter dito sa filtered back projection refers to a mathematical function rather than to a metal filter, di ba? So, more on math siya. So, yun lang naman ang image reconstruction. Filter back projection. Okay. Now, let's uh, discuss uh, multiplanar reformation. 
MPR. This is also known as MPR. So multi-slice spiral city excels in three-dimensional multiplanar reformation. So dyan talaga nag excel ang CT scan. And MPR or multiplanar reformation, this is the process by which transverse images are stacked to form a three-dimensional data set. Yan siya. So transverse um, axial images or transverse or axial images are stacked to form a three, 3D data 3D data set that can be rendered as an image in several ways. So, yan siya. So basically, there are three there are three 3D MPR algorithms that are used most frequently in computed tomography. So these are maximum intensity projection or MIP, the shaded surface display or SSD, and the last one is shaded volume display or SVD. So let's discuss first the MIP or the maximum intensity projection. So MIP reconstructs an image by selecting the highest value of pixels along any arbitrary line through the data set and exhibiting only those pixels. So ang, gina, ang ginagawa ng ang MIP projection, MIP is kinaselect lang daw niya ang highest value pixels along those nag acquire na data set. Okay. So now MIP is um, commonly and widely used in computed tomography and geography or city A or city and geography because um, because MIP can be reconstructed because this um, this type of projection can be reconstructed very quickly. So mabilis lang siya. And also MIP also is the simplest form of 3D imaging. So among the three, this is the simplest form no, ng image reconstruction. And it also provides excellent differentiation of vasculature from surrounding tissue. But this lacks vessel depth because superimposition or superimposed vessels are not displayed. So ito, excellent siya. So this is widely used in city angel or angel na mga procedures. Okay. So ang downside lang nito kung meron kang uh, vessels na naka superimpose, hindi siya gan kaganda. So kaya lang kaya ang makita dito mga main vessels or main arteries. Yan. Ngayon, ano naman ang shaded surface display? So SSD is a computer-aided design and manufacturing applications. So di ba, as familiar mo sir mo, if kanang mga familiar sa mga, really sa mga computer, di ba mga, na may mga term SSD, maya na. So more on the, ano na siya, the processor. Ha? So it was initially applied. So this, um, type of image reconstruction or 3D reconstruction it was initially applied to bone imaging. But now, it is widely used for virtual colonoscopy. So, ano itong virtual colonoscopy? So, para may idea kayo. So, itong virtual colonoscopy, ang patient, uh, city, city pa rin ito na obviously city na procedure, so ito, ang patient is ginapabawal para, para empty ang kanyang colon. Okay, di ba? So mag-inom ang patient ng laxative. Now you scan the patient um, for the scout image. And then after that, you will have or the city, uh, city technologist will pump air um, from the patient's anus para mag-dilate yung, yung colon. Now, you scan it. Now, ito namang, ano, na-scan na data or na-acquire na data from the patient nag scan this will now be um, reconstructed. Now, if you uh, if you see it in a computer, uh, kaya siya tinawag na virtual, 
colonoscopy kasi ang display nito sa computer para kang naga nagapasok sa loob ng colon ng iyong patient. So ito ang kanyang image. So pwede kang mag ma, para kang mag-tour ka sa kanyang colon. So here makikita mo kung meron siyang even a polyp or small na suspected na lesion. Yan. So 3D siya makikita mo. Pwede ka mag-scroll, scroll. So, mag-travel ka from the descending colon, transverse trans colon, and then, and then the descending colon. So, makita mo yun siya lahat using the shaded surface display. Yan. So, surface band. Okay. Again. So, um, surface boundaries can be made um, very distinctive and can provide an image that appears very three-dimensional. So this um, images, um, or this image is called volume rendered. Okay? That is what you call volume rendered. Okay. So ano naman yung last one? So the shaded volume display or SVD, SVD, is very sensitive to the operator selected pixel range. So, ang, ang operator mismo ang mag-set ng ano yung iselect niya na pixels or, 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 or yung ano yung iselect niya na pixels. So, may range siya na i-input and then itong SVD ang mag-detect or mag -pili. Now, this can make imaging of actual anatomic structures difficult. Yun lang kanyang disadvantage. Okay, now let's move on to image quality. So, to see the quality of, of an image, there are five you know, that we have to consider. So, if if a conventional radiograph or in X-ray, ang, ang usual lang na ginagamit dito or ginaconsider are spatial resolution, contrast resolution, and noise, Ang, ang sa city scan is meron tayong lima. So a number of methods are available for, me for measuring city image quality. These are or these includes the spatial resolution, contrast resolution, noise, linearity, and the last one is uniformity. Okay. The first one is spatial resolution. So, ano ba ang spatial resolution? So, this is um, the degree of blurring. And it is a measure of the spatial resolution of the system and is controlled by a number of factors. So, again, spatial resolution, or in other words, spatial resolution is the ability to distinguish between objects or structures that differ in density. Yeah. So, ang spatial resolution is a function of pixel size sa CT scan. So, here, this one has four or low spatial resolution. This has, this one has um, a very good spatial resolution. Okay. So, um, because the image of the interface is a visual rendition of pixel values, these values could be analyzed across the interface to arrive at the measure of spatial resolution. So spatial resolution is a function of, of pixel size. So the smaller the pixel size, the better is the spatial resolution. Kasi nga, marami kang data. So mas maganda yung iyong differentiation. Okay. So again, kung mas maliit yung pixel size, the better ang, spe ang spatial resolution. So the city imaging systems allow reconstruction of images after imaging followed by post-processing tasks. And this is a, a powerful way to affect spatial resolution. So kaya importante ang image reconstruction para ma-improve din ang iyong resolution, especially, most especially. Um, or spatial resolution. Okay. So now, what are the factors, other factors that affect 
um, spatial resolution. Again, yung sabi ko kanina, the smaller the pixel size is, the higher the spatial resolution is. Okay, ang lahat ng ito, ang, ang relationship nila sa spatial resolution is inverse. So ngayon, if you increase the FOV, the, well, the pixel size also increases. Now, this will result in low spatial resolution. Okay? So, ang focal spot naman, a larger focal spot will decrease the resolution, while a smaller focal spot will increase the spatial resolution. The slice thickness, the larger the slice thickness is, the lower the resolution will be. And with a detector size, Increase in detector size decreases resolution. So lahat ng kanilang, all these uh, factors inverse ang kanilang relationship or influence sa spatial resolution. Okay. And uh, lastly, before ko makalimutan, ang design din pala ng collimator or the design of the pre-patient, di ba na-discuss natin, the two types of collimation sa CT scan. So the design of pre-patient and pre-detector collimation also affects the level of scatter radiation. Therefore, this influences spatial resolution by affecting the contrast of the image. Ngayon, let's understand ERF and MTF. So, ang ERF is edge response function. The, M, the MTF is the modulation transfer function. So, ano itong dalawa? So, ERF or edge response function is the ability of the city imaging system to reproduce with accuracy a high contrast edge. Okay. So the measured ERF can be transformed into another mathematical expression called the called the modulation modulation transfer function. Okay. Okay, so the MTF or the modulation transfer function is the ratio of the image to the object as a function of spatial frequency. So medyo madugo itong ano no, MTF. Pero you can understand this so, uh, when you read the book. So according to Bouchon, so the MTF is the ratio diba, of the image to the object as a function of spatial frequency. So, mayroong mga lines doon. So, gaano daw ka-faithful ang pag-display um, pag ng iyong city imaging system? Gaano siya ka-accurate sa actual doon sa iyong acquired image? So, mayroon siyang measurement. So, the, if the image faithfully represents the object, the MTF of city imaging system would have a value of 1. If masyadong um, malapit doon sa actual mo na in-image na object, you will have a value of 1. However, if the image were simply blank or contained no information at all regarding the object, the MTF would be 0. And intermediate levels of fidelity result in intermediate MTF values also. Okay. So let's proceed to second na characteristic. Okay. So contrast resolution. So this term refers to the ability to distinguish one soft tissue from another regardless of size or shape. So this is where uh, we all know that this is where multi-slice parasitic excels in contrast resolution. So again, the absorption of X-rays in tissue is characterized by the X-ray linear attenuation coefficient. 
So, andun, andun yun siya sa table kanina. So, the linear attenuation coefficient is the fraction of a beam of X-rays or gamma rays that is absorbed or scattered per unit thickness. So here we have an illustration. So this illustration shows a fat muscle bone structure. So you can refer to your book if hindi masyadong maganda yung ating image. So not only are the atomic numbers are somewhat different, di ba? So for the uh, for the fat, it has an atomic number of 6.8. For the muscle, it has an atomic number of 7.4. For bone, it has an atomic number of 13.8. So, but the mass, mass densities nila are different also. For fat, 0.91. For muscle, 1. For bone, 1.85 kilograms per cubic meters. Diba? So, although these differences are measurable, they are not imaged well on conventional radiography. Diba? So, hindi mo clearly na ma-distinguish or ma-differentiate ang fat, muscle, and bone sa, sa conventional radiography. But the CT imaging system is able to amplify, amplify these, these differences in subject contrast. So, the image contrast is high. So, ito yung special sa CT. Gina-amplify niya or ginapalakasan niya yung differences para ma- Ma distinguish talaga yung fat from the muscle and from the from the bone. So the range of city numbers for these tissues is approximately negative 150 and 1000. And when yes. And this amplified contrast scale allows city to better solve adjacent structure that are similar in composition. So contrast resolution is superior in city principally because of X-ray beam collimation. The contrast resolution provides or provided by city is considerably better than that available in conventional radiography, obviously. So again, this is because of scatter radiation rejection. So sino bang responsible niyan? Again, it is, or these are the collimators, the pre-patient collimators and the pre-detector collimation. So the ability to image low conscious objects with CT is limited by the size and uniformity of the object and by the noise of the system. So ano yung noise? Again, ang noise, madali ilang siyang i- makita or makilala. So, noise appears on the image as graininess. Yan, masyadong grainy. So, kung masyadong grainy, that is what you call high noise image or very noisy. So, low noise images like this, they appear very smooth to the eye. But, if it is a high noise image, it appears very spotty and blotchy just like this. Yeah. And so ultimately, it is the patient dose or the number of x-rays used by the detector to produce the image that controls the noise. Okay. So again, noise is the percentage standard deviation of a large number of pixels obtained from a water bath image. So meron ding ibang factors na nagadepende ang noise. So this could affect the noise. The KVP and filtration, the pixel size, light thickness, detector efficiency, and patient dose. But ultimately, it is the patient dose that controls the noise. Okay, ano naman ang linearity? So this is very unique in city. No? So, City imaging systems must be calibrated frequently. So, dito mo malalaman if um, maganda pa ba yung iyong system. Um, so that this is calibrated frequently because we have to know if water is consistently represented by city number zero and other tissues by appropriate city numbers. 
So, ano ang ginagamit natin dito? So, we have here a 5-pin test object. Or ang test mismo is tinatawag na 5-pin test. So, this is designed by the American Association of Physicists in Medicine or the AAPM. So, paano ba siya ginagawa? So, the attenuation coefficient for each pin is known precisely. And the city number is computed. So, yan. Ginascan itong 5-pin test object or the 5-pin test phantom. So, after this object is imaged, the city number for each pin should be recorded and its mean value and standard deviation is plotted. So, yan. So, gina, gina record yung mean value and the standard deviation. So, kung nag-deviate ba siya doon sa yung standard. So, the plot of city number versus linear attenuation coefficient should be straight. Should be a straight line that passes through city number zero for water. So, ito, kung i-plot mo siya, so, dapat, hindi siya mag-deviate sa line. Tapos, dapat, yung zero mo, what W is for water. Dapat, matama siya, doon sa zero. Para malaman mo na maganda or consistent pa yung iyong city number. Okay? The last one is uniformity. So, or this is known as spatial uniformity. So, ang concept ng uniformity or spatial uniformity, the pixel values should be constant in all regions of the reconstructed image. So, ano ang mangyayari or paano mo malalaman kung hindi uniform yung iyong um, imaging system. So, ang appearance niyan, if hindi makorrect yung iyong uh, uniformity, it will appear as copying artifact. So, ito. So, kahit um, ang ginawa dito para ma-achieve ito is nag-scan sila ng water phantom. So, if you scan that, di ba, zero ang kanya city number, it should be, it should appear, kasi di ba, water lang naman yung uh, laman ng phantom. So, dapat uniform siya. Wala naman tayong object sa gitna. So, malalaman mo yun siya pag meron tayong copying artifact. So, meaning, hindi na constant ang pixel values mo and all the regions of the image acquired. Okay. So, yun lang. Okay, thank you everyone for your time and for listening. Please study for the midterm examination next week and I will announce the coverage in the Google Classroom. Thank you so much and have a nice day.